right, so thank you so much, Jody and Debbie, and also the members of the Parent Council. And also a big thank you to Sarah, Vinny, Ellen, HRC, Time to Thrive, everyone, all of you, thank you so much. This really means a lot to me. You know, I presented the Upstander Award to Katie Couric on Friday, and honestly, to be receiving the Upstander Award right now, I'm just truly humbled and honored. So anyway, hello everybody. It's really great to be here today. This is my third year coming to the conference and every time it just keeps getting better and bigger and awesome, so I really love it. And it's in Orlando next year and that's where I live, so like a close drive. All right, I need to like get to the speech and stuff, okay. <laughs> so many of you know that I began my public advocacy work at an early age of six years old. My family and I participated in a 2020 segment with Barbara Walters called My Secret Self. I was so little that when I heard I was going to be on TV, I considered Barbara Walters to be my new best friend, and I was excited to have a play date with her. That was hands down the most groundbreaking play date I've ever had. Looking back, it's hard to believe that this past Thursday, April 27th, marked the 10th anniversary of that original interview. So much has changed since then. So much progress has been made, yet we are all here today because we know how much work lies ahead. When I began kindergarten in 2006, the word transgender was foreign to most people. When my mother called our local school board to discuss my situation, they had no idea what she was talking about. From that day forward, my life has been a series of battles and triumphs. My parents had to fight the school for my right to wear a girl's uniform and use a female pronoun. The school refused to refer to me as Jazz and forced me to use my legal birth name. For five years, they banned me from using the girls' bathroom. I was forced to use the nurses' bathroom where kids came in sick, bleeding, and vomiting. At times, I'd sneak into the girls' restroom until I was caught and reprimanded. So I stopped using the bathrooms altogether and would hold my bladder the, to the point where I'd actually pee my pants. To make matters worse, I was banned from playing girls' travel soccer for two years. I was allowed to practice with the girls, but for the games, I was benched. I've experienced bullying and isolation, but in the end, all of these obstacles have made me a better person and a stronger person with pride. I'm actually really weak, I can't lift anything. <laughs> I know that 2017 has already been a tough year for kids like me. When the Trump administration rolled back Obama's directive protecting trans youth in our schools, many of us felt defeated. But we will not be bullied. Our community has already shown the world that we are brave, strong, determined, committed, and resilient. We live as our authentic selves when many in our society have told us it's wrong, and there's nothing braver than that. Many people ask me if it's hard giving up my privacy by being on TV, and heck yeah, it is hard, but it doesn't compare to the struggles faced by our LGBTQ community, specifically trans women of color. With my TLC show, I Am Jazz, I hope I could try to normalize what I'm going through so that more youth don't have to be afraid of expressing who they are. I'm willing to give up some of my privacy if it means making a difference and helping other people out there who might be struggling. Now, here's some inside scoop about making a TV show. The cameras don't follow me everywhere 24 seven. Unlike the president, they actually let me pee in peace. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Plus, there are also child labor laws that limit the filming hours, so I make sure that I get some of my jazz time, otherwise known as binge-watching TV on my laptop. And I watch a lot of TV, ranging from Game of Thrones to RuPaul's Drag Race to anime. I, yeah, I watch everything. Don't call me a weird nerd for watching anime. I love it. For those adults in the room, Thank you for letting LGBTQ youth know that they have community, community support. You could be a lifeline for a kid who has lost the will to live and has nowhere else to go. Trans youth in particular are so vulnerable. 
Statistics say that 50% of kids like me will try to take their lives before they are 21. You know, I reiterate that statistic all the time because it's so crucial that we help these kids. I know I have faced depression and there's certain moments where even I feel like, is it worth it to live? And I tell myself that, you know, I have the love and support of my family and I have to use this platform and opportunity to help other kids who aren't as privileged. And all of you as well, by supporting transgender youth and just doing something as meaningful as giving them a hug or telling them that you care, each of you has the power to lower these statistics. Be a mentor, make them feel safe, and have an open door policy. For those kids in the room, I know I'm on TV, but honestly, I'm just like many of you. You may be exploring your gender identity and sexuality, and that's okay because you are searching for who you are on your own terms, not someone else's idea of who or what you should be. Let's all be proud of ourselves and love each other. Remember, we are all in this together. A lot has changed since I was that six-year-old girl who was besties with Barbara Walters. This has all turned into so much more than I'd ever anticipated. And I'm so proud of our community for unifying to reach a common goal. Together, we will continue creating positive change in the world as we work to achieve equality. Thank you all so much.